In general, any alien who is physically present in the United States or who arrives in the United States, whether or not at a designated port of arrival, and including an alien who is brought to the United States after having been interdicted in international or United States waters, irrespective of such alien status, may apply for asylum. Refugees and asylees are similar in that they are both fleeing persecution or perceived persecution based on the same five factors, race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group or political opinion. When refugees come to the United States, it officially and are resettled here, they've already been granted that refugee status overseas. They've gone through an extensive vetting processes, they've been given permission to be resettled in the United States or other countries where they might be resettled as well. Asylum seekers show up asking for that protection. They haven't been granted protection already. They are asking essentially for those same protections but have not been granted them. Customs CBP agents responded with force as a group of migrants neared Pedwest border crossing in San Isidro. The march organized by migrants was peaceful until Mexican authorities forced them to enter a canal that defied San Diego and Tijuana. Border patrol agents discharged flash and gas grenades into the crowd where children were present. CBP closed down all north and southbound cross-border traffic and evacuated the outlet mall adjacent to the border. A helicopter swept low, lifting up dust in the plume of gas, extending it beyond the immediate area. This show of force was unnecessary and excessive. Um, and that was from eyewitness accounts saying that there was no warning, just that the Mexican authorities kind of pushed them into this canal zone that was right by the, the wall, right by the border, and, and that's what happened. I'm Jody with American Friends Service Committee from AFSC. It's a direct legal services program as well as um, our other half of our program, which is immigration organizing and advocacy. We, we do a lot of things. Tonight we're going to focus specifically on um, one week in October that I spent down on the Arizona-Mexico border working with asylum seekers and providing some legal orientation. We have asylum seekers here in Iowa, here in our communities, who are coming to our office asking questions. And so that helped me bridge the gap a little bit of, okay, what happened before they arrived in Iowa? Take that opportunity to tell people that you know they are worth something and help them maybe shore up a little bit of dignity before they entered our horrible, awful immigration system in the United States that for sure was going to take multiple stabs at you know destroying whatever dignity they may have. And that felt really important to me. This is a port of entry that's open 24 hours a day and the line is very, very long. There are always people there. So only 10 families are allowed to wait at a time. And you've got 10 families waiting and Customs and Border Protection might process one family a day. They might process one family a week because they don't know when Customs and Border Protection is going to take another family and you, nobody wants to miss that chance for there to be another family who can, who can um, present themselves to custom, Customs and Border Protection. So it seems like in terms of food, the, people are getting enough food between the shelters and even those who are staying um, at the port of entry. You know that the head of that particular port of entry has told her like hey like this isn't our number one priority like we're trying to like block drugs from coming in like there's a lot of things happening at the port of entry. Like, people didn't just get this idea that like I'm gonna go ask for asylum like I know exactly what I'm doing like they were literally fleeing something and they don't know what they were gonna do when they got to the border or what it is that they're supposed to do or ask for but they just know that they're asking for protection. The far majority of people I spoke to the whole week through whether I was in Tucson or on the Mexico side of the border whether I was at a shelter or the families who were gathered at, a port of, at the port of entry were fleeing some sort of dangerous situation in their country. That the far majority, you know, 90% was I was threatened or I was kidnapped for three weeks and my family didn't know where I was. Um, I had a 10 year old with his aunt sit here and tell me to my face that he doesn't know where his 14 year old sister is. She's missing. I have like a 10 year old telling me this. This person, the family member was murdered right in front of them and they were told to get out, you know, or else they were going to be the next person, like over and over and over again. So I wanted to make sure to make that point because I, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know if it was like naive or just something that hadn't crossed my mind until I went down there. You know, I'm like, yeah, everybody's coming to seek asylum. That's, you know, what they're doing. And they were just like, what is that? Like, I don't, you know, what, what is that? I see like, what does that mean? This is a refugee situation. And, you know, unfortunately our country is not looking at it that way, but that's absolutely what it is. Fleeing for your life, fleeing for your safety. Within the last two weeks, President Trump issued an order saying that individuals must show up at a port of entry. Now, a judge 
issued an injunction blocking that order from taking effect based on the fact that our own laws say that you have a right to seek asylum, whether at a port of entry or whether crossing the border at any point. A lot of the people staying at the end project would just kind of be outside enjoying the sun, you know, nice 70 degree weather. And a couple of people told me, oh, I love being able to walk around outside. I can't do that at home. I couldn't do that at home. It was too dangerous. When I talked to people who were already in the U.S., it was very evident that people felt more relaxed. They maybe thought the worst of it was over. They survived camping out at the port of entry for several days with small children. They made it through Customs and Border Protection where they told me that they also slept on the floor. It was very cold. They got served two burritos a day. I just noticed this sense of relaxation as I felt like individuals didn't know what's coming next. It's very difficult to obtain asylum in the United States. Nearly impossible, in fact. 80-90% of cases of people seeking asylum are denied. When you are seeking asylum in the United States. You are basically asking for protection from persecution or because you fear returning because of perceived persecution based on one of five factors, race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group or political opinion. All these individuals I spoke to, why are they, why are they coming to the US? Again, a lot, sometimes it's domestic violence related. A lot of it is, um, gang violence, right? Um, cartel violence. And the Attorney General said those aren't state actors, like this doesn't, no can do. I was explaining literally like the fact that you are here does not mean that you get to stay here permanently. Like this is only the beginning. And looking at people knowing they're thinking that like ah, the hard part's behind me and the hard part is not behind them because the majority of them are gonna end up being deported back to their countries that they were fleeing from in the first place. People are granted asylum in the United States, but just not for the particular reasons that individuals are fleeing Central America or Mexico. That's the problem when you're talking about Department of Homeland Security and talking about ICE and Customs and Border Protection. Things are constantly changing, and so it's hard to even be able to describe in a succinct manner, like, this is the process. First here, and then here, and you know, then this happens, and this happens. It, a lot of it's just, a mystery and you don't exactly know what's what's happening.